Hey there, friends. It's me, your boy, B3. Back to another kicking graphic novel review. We are going to continue our reviews of the Nick Spencer Spider-Man run with The Amazing Spider-Man by Nick Spencer, Volume 3, Lifetime Achievement. This is the run that started in uh, 2018. We're just going to keep it going. <laughs> We're just going to keep it headed uh, the right way. So... Let me read you the back of the book real quick here. Hey, is the world ready for a pro Spider-Man, J. Jonah Jameson? J. Jonah Jameson has a new job. As a shock jock, Spidey's post-secret identity relationship with Jonah was already complicated, but this very controversial public embrace may put him over the edge, which means it's bad timing for the enforcers to come at him harder than ever. But Spidey isn't the only one getting attacked. Jonah himself is in deep trouble. Who, other than most of New York, would want to punish J. Jonah Jameson? Aunt May is in danger as well, and only Spider-Man can help her. You may think you know where a story like this is going, but you don't. Because Taskmaster and Black Ant are on the scene, and they don't have a problem with collateral damage. Collecting Amazing Spider-Man 2018, 11 through 15 by Nick Spencer, Ryan Otley, Chris Piccolo, Cliff Rathburn, Alve, Live Say, Tim Townsend, Wayne Foucher, Victor Olzaba, Lauren Martin, and Andrew Crossley. Rated T14. I kind of wish Ramos was still on the book. I think he's my favorite Spider-Man artist. I love me some Ramos. Uh, but still, the art's good. <laughs> it's not bad at all. Quite good art. So, lifetime achievement. Let's get into it. So, it starts off kind of Christmassy. J. Jonah Jameson just screaming into an effing microphone. His ratings are plummeting. Uh, Kingpin kind of wants to manipulate him and Spider-Man. So Kingpin decides to give, and remember, Kingpin is mayor at this point. He wants to give JJ a Lifetime Achievement Award presented by Spider-Man. Because Kingpin's kind of doing this thing where he's putting up photoshopped billboards or billboards with like someone in a Spider-Man costume and claiming that he and Spider-Man are like buds and on the same team and work together. Uh... <laughs> that way people who don't like him will be against spider-man and people who do like spider-man will be with him it's kind of a win-win and he wants him and spider-man to be seen together in person and kind of doing this uh using jj's new relationship with spider-man to kind of force him to do that is uh the thing also people are hiring supervillains to get them uh <laughs> popular toys for the holidays which is hilarious <laughs> and we get uh we get arcade and i'm quite the arcade fan uh he's just so 60s batman but also can be kind of horrifying and i just i love arcade so much uh so i'm glad he has a part to play in this book spider-man uh tells Jonah that he's not going to present him with the award at the Lifetime Achievement thing. They argue, uh, and then the Enforcers show up, and they only beat Spider-Man because, uh, you know, they make Spider-Man dive in front of a blaster aimed at uh, Jonah. And then they wake up in this just death trap that <laughs> Arcade made. It's got old spider slayers in it, robots that look like fly people, and the real Scorpion, which are all supervillains things that Jonah created uh, in his crusade against Spider-Man. But it's kind of like this monument. It's, like, it's basically a museum to Triple J. And the person who's kind of Speaking to them over the intercom is like, 
giving Jonah's whole history and is basically like, hey, Jonah was the best, one of the few people willing to stand up against the wall crawler. And now he's, you know, turned his back on the truth and is supporting Spider-Man instead of attacking him <laughs> like he should be. Or at least like this person believes he should be. So they have to fight these supervillains, and the spider slayers are real, so Jonah is actually able to pilot one. And then this kaiju-sized big man robot shows up, and the big man was like this uh, crime boss that had a lot of stuff with Jonah going on. And they fight this, and it turns out to be Frederick Foswell Jr., who is the son of the original big man. And then I think his sister became the big man later. And he kind of is misinformed about his dad and doesn't think his dad was really a criminal and kind of basically just thinks he was killed by Spider-Man. It's not true. And Jonah tells him the truth and uh, a lot of wild stuff goes down and then jonah goes to the award show and basically just spits in the kingpin's face which is wild but because his ratings are low and all this other stuff that's piled up jonah kind of gets put in a slot on the radio that nobody listens to and he's replaced with like you know those shitty radio show hosts that like blast air horns and sound effects and just make tit jokes and stuff he's replaced by that and it's like christ <laughs> and then the scorpion is scooped up by taskmaster and black ant uh the world's best supervillain romance it's really really fun and then uh craven hires arcade which is cool we get to see some more stuff with uh the lizard because kurt connor's can now turn into the lizard at will but the animal instincts or lizard personality don't take him over because he has an inhibitor chip that suppresses them and also does not allow him to be violent when he's in his lizard form uh which is pretty cool and his son is like half lizard and his wife are half lizard because he had to use the lizard formula on them to save their lives and the clone conspiracy when all the clones were shutting down I really liked The Clone Conspiracy. I'm going to review that one day. I really liked it. I did. And the art in this section is great. The lizard is drawn, like, so well in this part. I really love it. And so Aunt May kind of turns out to be broke. And a lot of stuff happens with that. She kind of gives this homeless man a good meal at a fancy restaurant and taskmaster and the black ant end up there because they're chasing down the rhino and the rhino busts through the restaurant walls and the rhino has gone straight at this point uh he went straight i believe it oh he went straight a while ago it might even have been a little before the clone conspiracy but he was definitely no because he was serving the quote-unquote jackal in that story i think he went straight right after the clone conspiracy speaking of and then, speaking of the clone conspiracy, yet again, <laughs> the homeless man kind of turns out to be someone that was cloned, but their clone is still around. Uh, and then that becomes an issue as well. It was Betty Brandt's husband. He died. Ned Leeds... Is that his name? I think so. So, uh, the Rhino gets captured by Black Ant and Taskmaster because Spider-Man kind of decides, has to decide between saving Rhino uh, from Black Ant and Taskmaster or saving Aunt May and a bunch of innocent civilians who are buried under rubble. And this kind of makes the Rhino pissed at him and it's like, okay, guess the Rhino's a supervillain again now because he swears vengeance on Spider-Man for doing this. And it's like, can't, 
can't we just let a villain reform? Why can't we just do that? Ever. In, in main continuity. It's like, oh, it's happened in main continuity before. It's like, yeah, but not to villains that are like popular. Not to popular villains. The rhino being reformed was kind of nice. It felt nice. And then you just... It's kind of not even a good way to make him a villain again. Honestly, it doesn't feel big enough. It just... I don't know. Can we just have made a new rhino? <laughs> Someone else in a new rhino suit or something? I mean, that's what they do uh, <clears throat> in the next volume. That, that happens with a certain villain, so we'll see that. And I liked that. I thought it was done incredibly well. In fact, the volume after this one is my favorite in the uh, series. Huh. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. So, of course, uh, Spider-Man uh, fails to save Ned Leeds. He dies, but everyone else uh, survives. Uh, the rubble collapsing. Uh, Dr. Connor's son, who is lizardified, decides he wants to sneak out of the house to go meet friends he met online. But, uh, you know, he's a lizard. So it's you can probably guess it's not going to go well. But you'll have to wait and find out because it doesn't uh, come to a conclusion in this volume. So that is it right now. Yeah, that is it for this volume of Nick Spencer Amazing Spider-Man. Thank you all very much for your support. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. Check out all the cool links in the description below, Facebook, Twitter, etc. Uh, let me know if you want to see another book in this series or if you want to see something else. Let me know if you want me to break them up or if you want me to just do them all in a row. That's it. Thank you all once again, and I'll see you all next time. Bye for now.